this next thing we got to talk about, guys. So Kevin Stefanski, in his in his press conference yesterday, said that he still has not decided who the play caller is. Right? Uh, we'll talk about. I, I mentioned. Well, let's mention the Nick Chubb thing really quick because it's there. Good to hear that he's he's supposed to progress to more like a different type of workout, more football style workout. Andrew Berry was saying they should know soon if he'll be ready for the beginning of the year. And there was no answer on Brazil. But let's talk about play call. So we've talked a lot in the media on this show, and I'm sure the other shows in town, about what's going on with the play calling. Mm-hmm. Like, is Stefanski being, is he giving up play calling? If, is he having his hand forced to give up play calling? Or is he going to still call the plays? And why don't the Browns announce it? Now, what's funny to me is, what do, when it comes to Stefanski, guys, what do fans that aren't all in on Stefanski most complain about? Play calling. Call. Okay. And yet those same fans are now complaining that the media is making a big story about this and there's no story. It doesn't matter. Even though they've been complaining for four years about the play calling. So if you're one of those people, you're a hypocrite. You're a hypocrite. Okay? <laughs> I don't like it. Now, it's a, the Browns have turned this into a bigger story than it needs to be, in my opinion, guys. Because if they had just announced it when they had the idea that they haven't decided, I don't believe that. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't believe what why why haven't they uh, you, you think I'm wrong? Well, you think they maybe haven't decided I have I have my own personal beliefs of how this is gonna go. Go ahead. But I'm no I'm gonna set those aside for a second. Yeah. Let's take them at their word, okay? Let's take them at face value. They're telling the truth, they don't know. Kevin hasn't decided. Okay. It's perfectly logical not to announce a play caller in March if he truly hasn't decided. What type of relationship has he had with Ken Dorsey to this point? They have to get in together. They have to work together. Like, they haven't had one practice together to see how each other operates. Right. Kevin didn't decide. Really, I don't think Kevin decided until almost the start of the regular season when he got here who was going to call plays him or AVP. And he decided it was going to be himself. Now, he was a rookie head coach. He had a lot of decisions to make. Maybe he saved that one for last, whatever. But you want to go through practices. You want to go through training camp. You want to get to know a guy. They've had zero time to do that. So if you take them at face value. That, Which I don't, but go ahead. But if you take yeah. at face value that they haven't made a decision yet, that he hasn't decided, yeah. of course you're not going to decide in March. They haven't even had an OTA together. Like, they've had okay. zero time on the field together. Right. So Kevin doesn't know. Ken's, you can sit here across the table from each other. But until you get out there on the field, am I right? Until you, you get out there on the field yeah. and experience it and feel it and see how he handles situations, how do you have any idea what you want to do in September when you have had zero time together in March? And everything you say makes sense, but do you are you buying what you're selling right now? I don't know. I was staunch. <laughs> yeah. I, but, what but, is no, what? no, but here's really? the thing. I don't know for me is moving toward the line because six weeks ago I was pretty convinced – Kevin wasn't going to be calling plays. They were bringing Ken in to call the plays. Yeah. And now the fact that they haven't announced it yet kind of tells me maybe he does. Maybe he really does want to get here and see and and well, you see how it goes. So yeah. that's actually for me to say I don't know is yeah. actually moving down the line because I was over yeah. where Bull was and I'm sort yeah. of training toward the well, middle now. And I'll say if you're right that maybe if your theory is true that he wants to talk to him and go, then. I would be okay with that because that means his hand hasn't been forced in this situation. Yes. Correct. That's all I'm asking for. Yeah. And I guess we'll never know for sure. Well, we will, but you know not I, for a while. You know what I think? Yeah. I think that once you know why they haven't announced it? Because for the for the simple reason he ain't put that pen on that paper yet. That's what it is. Because remember I told y'all last year, if it was up to me and it was my job was quote unquote on the line, I'm calling the plays. Yeah. Flat out. Yep. It's a good point. At guys. this mo- at this point, he ain't signed no extension yet. Now, will it happen? Absolutely. I think after it happens, well, then, drive. now I can say, All right, now I can sit back and say, you know what, I got some stability here. I'm comfortable now. We, I got everything. I got this ship back on track. Ken, go ahead. Let me see what you do in OTAs. And if I don't like what you do in OTAs, guess what? Yeah. Training camp is back to my boat. I'm that's calling the place. Which is why they haven't announced it yet. Right. That's actually, I hadn't thought about it from that angle. That's an excellent point. Well, thank you. Uh, and, you know, and it could be that maybe that's part of the holdup. Maybe Kevin Stefanski's like, it's my decision who calls plays. 
And if, if Ken Dorsey's going to call plays, it's up to me, not the, you. The extension actually makes me believe that that is true. The fact that they yeah. are extending him yeah. ha- tells me that he hopefully has the autonomy and the authority that he should have and that I thought he had up until mm. January. Yeah. And I mean, I was told he was the one that wanted Rabel here first. Like okay. it was Kevin's That's decision. Great. Of course he did. It was Kevin's He's decision. He's a Buckeye. Go Bucks. It was Kevin's decision first. Now, do you believe that? I don't, if you're skeptical of that, I don't blame you. <laughs> well, but you probably heard it from a good source that, you know. Yeah, I mean, it was within yeah. the team, but, you know, what do you want him to say? He was forced on him? They're not, you know, even <laughs> yeah, if. Oh, that's true. So, <laughs> that's true for, from the 30,000-foot view, yeah. here's, where, here's where the extension's really important. From the 30,000-foot view, if you're looking down at the Browns and you're not inside the building, they fired their offensive coordinator, the head coach is in the last year of his deal, and they just brought in an elite head coach as a consultant. That is lining up to fire the head coach every single time. So to sign the extension, to hear it was Kevin's idea to bring him in or whatever, is all good things. Now we just have to let it play out because from the outside, it doesn't look good. But from the inside, if he signs the extension, when he signs the extension, all all of that goes away. And if it really was his idea, then that shows you a level of confidence in his position. Now, he does have that. And that's, that's important. Kevin is unbelievably confident with no ego. I know that sounds contradictory. Yeah, well, that's... But he uh, is very confident in, in his abilities Kevin to is, lead a team. Kevin is one of those coaches that... He he is a... Uh, he's lethal. You know, I went up against Kevin when I was playing with Denver in 2019, and he was the play caller for the Vikings. Vikings yeah. And we... <laughs> I'll never forget this. We were up like 21 to nothing or 28 to nothing at halftime. And he came out in that second half, and he found our corner that was not that good at the time, Mm -hmm. and he went at this man literally every play. It was so bad that they had to take him out the game. (laughs) It was uh, I was like, hey, this man is ruthless. So Kevin got some killer in him. That's what at that moment I always had respect for Kevin's defense because I was like, he got some killer instinct in him. And I think that that's what we – I want to see him do that more in Cleveland now, now yeah. that he's got these pieces. I want to see him find somebody that's not that good and just continuously go right at them until they to the D coordinator yeah. got to pull the dude out the game. And it's not just the confidence, as you talk about, the confidence in himself. which is and, we, and we lost that. He came back and we lost that game. Oh, you too. lost the game? Yeah, we did. It wow. was unbelievable. Jeez. I sat there on the sideline like, this is unbelievable. Yeah. How did we blow this 20, 21 yeah. nothing or 28 nothing yeah. at halftime we lost. But also, you got to have confidence in your position within the team. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if he's willing, if he, if it was his decision to bring Mike Vrabel in, then he's not worried about, oh, here's this really good coach that they'll have in place if, right. if they fire me. He's right. not, he's obviously not worried about that. And so, all right, I'm feeling a little better. I was, when they first fired Alex Van Pelt, we heard that he might lose play calling. I was with you. I was very negative because I thought Jimmy was overstepping again yeah. and forcing his hand on a coach who had done a really good job. But you guys are, are talking me into that maybe it's Kevin's real decision here. I'm feeling well, a little said, better. As long I don't care who calls the plays. As long as it's Kevin Stefanski's decision. decision. I I, that's all I care about. I, I did that. when I was – was it yesterday? I was Yesterday I was listening to him talk at the Kevin – or at the owner's meeting, and uh, I think Tony Grossi asked him about it, about the play calling or about the coaches getting fired and stuff like that. And he was saying – you know, he obviously he says nothing, but in the yeah. nutshell, he he was saying, you know, we've been together for four years, and it was time to get new minds in there. Right. And I said that, you know, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. Like, that's that's nice to hear that you want some fresh ideas in there. That you saw this offense kind of be what it was, and you took it as far as you could. But if you want to get to the Super Bowl, yeah. maybe you think you need to get more elements and more different perspectives in there and you think about the guys that they're they hire it's a lot of young up and coming guys and I always it's said impressive stuff. I always yeah. said to myself well why has it been that none of our coaches have ever been poached off this off this uh roster you know nobody's ever said right. hey come be my office coordinator right. or be my head well coach. Drew Petsing last year Went from quarterbacks coach to OC in Arizona. He was the first that's one. That's true. Oh. Yeah, that is true. But that was one yeah. out of all these guys that's been here this for four or I five years. I thought Chad years. O'Shea would have moved on by now. Yeah, he so. Was, he was one of those hot names a couple years ago. So you think about the new guys that's in there. A lot of young, fresh blood that 
Kevin's yeah. probably thinking to himself, hey, we're going to groom something, make something nice, yeah. and then you guys is going to get taken from this staff, and it's well, going to make yeah. me look like a really good coach. Well, I mean, I don't I don't think he gets credit if Vrabel gets a job next Not year. Not Vrabel. Obviously. I'm talking about the uh, people on the offensive staff yeah, that, and, that they hired. Right. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because I'm assuming Vrabel will have a head coach job uh, yeah. next season, well, I would if, think. They don't get, if they don't get things right, he comes up, that's what he's like. <laughs> I Sorry, thought the Buckeyes had the greatest, <laughs> Sorry, buddy. the greatest transfer class of all time. They do, and th- th- they've literally lined themselves up to win it all this year. And if they don't, it's only one. Plus, th- it's only one thing you can say that they they couldn't beat Harbaugh in the last three years. Thanks, Ryan. It's been nice knowing you. There's an offensive coordinator job available in Green Bay. I, I don't think that because I think Ryan they'll be there. I think he'll win. Yeah. The, I think he'll win the Natty, and then he might tell them, "I'm going to the league." See ya. <laughs> <laughs> Enough of this recruiting nonsense. You Go ahead, Mike. One way or the other, it feels like we're getting toward the end of the of the well, ride. You know, the, the, t- the O State head coach in ten years really doesn't last mm. that long. You get about nine seasons and then out. Mike, 